Technology usage within construction companies continues to become more important year after year. And there's no doubt about it, keeping up with all of this change and all this opportunity can be very difficult. And so many construction companies have found that hiring a dedicated construction technology specialist is a incredibly helpful part of the way that they manage all of this new change. And in today's episode of Tech Tools for the Trades, we are going to talk to Jonah Walton. Jonah is a construction technology specialist with Polk Mechanical. They are a mechanical contractor that's based in Texas. Now, whether you are looking for a career as a construction technology specialist or you're a construction leader who's looking at adding this type of role within your organization, you will find this episode very insightful and very helpful in making very important decisions about construction technology adoption and implementation within your business in the future. Well, Jonah, thank you for joining me today. This is a topic that that I actually have conversations with uh, quite a few people on because there certainly is this increased um, interest and this increasing demand out there for people to have roles like yours. So I think that this is going to be a really a really great conversation, and I just want to thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me on. So uh, just to start things off, and of course, we'll dive into more details um, on your role at Polk Mechanical. Uh, but just at a high level, describe to me what your role looks like. At Polk, I kind of go between our BDC group, our operations group, and our IT group. Uh, I kind of spend, I am in house within our VDC group, but I would say I spend as much time interacting with all three of those groups as I do uh, like any other group. So uh, anything that we're like bringing technology into the field, the field's running into some problems, uh, somebody in the company's found some software they want to check out, or somebody has a problem they think software or technology might have a solution for. Um, Usually to start, they, somebody will walk into my office or hit me up on Teams, send me an email, um, get started on a project. But very like project based with uh, like a little bit of like recurring stuff going on. Can you walk me through what kind of the, what the yeah. organizational structure looks like? Yeah. Yeah. So our VDC group currently lives within our like operations group. So we definitely treat our like VDC, BIM and technology group as like an operational like asset and not um, purely as a support group, even though that's kind of how we operate very much. Like I, I feel like I'm in a position to advocate for the user um, and not in a position to worry about managing some of the back end. So what is an average day or average week look like for you? I spend about 15 hours to 20 hours, depending on the week, keeping things tidy and pro core, making sure our teams in the field are getting like ongoing training, making sure that like I'm just connecting with people, asking them about pro core, constantly calling product managers, trying to get into closed betas, um, anything in that space. Um, and then on top of that, working on a couple different projects. So uh, probably like two or three projects a quarter I'll take on, whether it's something reporting or implementing a new workflow, uh, rolling out a training for new software or something like that. So when it comes to implementing new tech, you bring in a new laser scanner, a new piece of software, maybe even a new Procore product, whatever it may be. Walk me through what implementation looks like and, and specifically talk about your role in that process. There's been a couple of different things that I've worked on implementing, and I feel like every time it's kind of been a different scenario. Um, so about two years ago, we picked out a new uh, site documentation, like 360 photo software. That involvement for me was going out and sourcing like six to seven different options, bringing in like a short list with like detailed information, pricing, um, hardware, software, uh, best use cases, all of that information. Um, so that that feels like a very traditional, like, hey, we're going to go out and do some do some research on it. And then there's been times where with Procore, for instance, um, it's about two months into the implementation. Whenever I started getting involved with it, 
Um, at first, it was very small involvement, um, and it kind of grew and grew. The more involved the implementation got, uh, the more the busier people had to start falling off. Um, and being someone that was dedicated to this applying technology space to software for our operations group, um, I kind of took that opportunity and really ran with it um, and, and tried to own that Procore implementation. And that kind of brought on a lot more, uh, I guess, trust with our, our leadership team. So software since then, usually now it's um, somebody brings something to me or I bring something from the outside. Usually it's trying to pitch that to some of our executive teams, see if there's buy-in from them, pitch it to the field, whatever the, whoever the product's for, I usually go to them. If they think it's a good idea, then, you know, we'll demo it out, we'll test it out, we'll do more, in, you know, research on it. So for our 360 site documentation stuff, I went through the initial test project, did the first couple walks myself, trained the person on site. And then now I, I administer that software as well and, and run the back end of that. So that was something that I took all the way from discovering the software through now being the administrator for two years of. That's that's really interesting. I, I really like how you touched on on the role that you play in kind of those that early decision making in that demo phase. Uh, but it's interesting because, again, I think this goes back to the benefits of having a dedicated role like yours, where you have somebody who has the time and the space and the scope to go out and test things and demo things and kind of poke and prod different tools uh, before it gets to a point where like there's serious consideration behind it. I think that's a really great example of the benefit that somebody like you and your role brings to, brings to uh, a company. Talk to me a little bit more about how closely you work um, with, with executive leadership within your, your organization. From the time that I started um, to now has been a pretty dramatic change. Originally, did not have very much contact with our executive team. Over the past couple of years, or at least since I've come onto the company, there's been a big push that they know, like, we've got to change what we do uh, on, on the technology side. We have to become more advanced, um, not only to, to be more efficient in what we do, but to continue to win work. Because general contractors expect companies the size of Polk, um, the size of other large mechanical and electrical plumbing contractors. They expect us to be ready and willing to use technology. We can just demonstrate how we can use technology to add value to a project, even from the subcontractor level. Uh, that's that's really important. So our executive team realizing that has, has definitely started bringing our construction technology group um, kind of in on more discussions early on. We'll call my cell phone, text me, send me an email. Hey, do you got a second to talk about this? Or like, hey, this is a problem our guys are facing in the field. Is there something we can do differently in Procore to, to solve this? Is there some technology out there in the space? Um, now they've even started, like they'll run into like a cool article on a website and send it over and they'll be like, hey, have you, have you seen this technology? What are your thoughts on this? What advice do you have for for construction leaders that are considering creating this type of a role within their organization? Where do you, you know, how do you suggest they they begin that process? I think you have to, you've got to find somebody that's willing to either really grow the person in that position and spend a lot of time with it or find somebody willing to step into that position and grow it themselves. I have not had a lot of like hands-on um, direction in this role but I've been set up in a great position where I've been able to reach out to people. And when I reach out to leadership, I don't feel like, I don't feel like there's any barriers between them and I we're there. I'm there to help them. And, and, and I at least feel like they value what I have to say. So my, any advice I have to leaders like looking to grow, grow this role is if you're going to put someone in this position, don't put them in there and tell them to research technology and then shoot down everything they have to say. Um, at the same time, anybody looking to step into this position, not every idea is a lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then kind of, um, similar, similarly, but you know, some, some people that are watching this episode right now and are kind of looking at themselves thinking, Hey, I would love to do that. 
I would actually love to be that person at the company I'm currently at. What kind of advice do you have for them and helping them kind of craft what this career could look like for themselves? Yeah, there's never been a better time to work in construction technology. All the information that you need is accessible on the internet. It's hard to find and you have to start like piecing things together. But I, I would say just stick with it. You're going to feel like a, a year ago, I, I did not feel comfortable speaking up about things in our room because I felt like I didn't know enough about the technology coming from the construction side. I would, you know, I remember the first time I asked someone what a SQL database was and kind of got chuckled out of the room a bit. So, uh, like, just stay with it. There's so much to learn in this technology space, but the majority of people in this space are coming down the same path that you're coming down. So don't feel alone and don't feel afraid to reach out to people. Find somebody that's doing what you want to do and talk to them because most of the people that work in construction technology love to talk about working in construction technology. Jonah, thank you so much for joining me. This has been such an interesting and fun conversation. Thank you to all of you that have watched this episode. And uh, with that, have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, sir. Bye.